Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to The Railway and welcome to another review of a Hornby DMU. <laughs> So today's model is brand new, I only got it delivered this week so I'm pretty excited about it. It is this, the Hornby Class 156, a Northern Rail Class 156 train pack, as you can see in this lovely Royal Air Force 100 livery. Now I've known about this for quite a while, I think they Hornby announced it back in January didn't they? However, when this was announced and when I heard that it was on the way, I didn't look into it really. I thought, you know what, this is a two car set, it's in quite a special livery, a one off livery, it's going to be quite a specialist item it's going to be quite expensive frankly I'm not even going to bother looking at it because I know I'm not going to be able to afford it to just get this just to review it how wrong I was because someone got in touch with me during the members live stream and said you know these things are only 125 pounds right I thought what that's very cheap for a brand new DMU and of course that's the RRP the Hatton's price is 112 pounds 50 I think if you want to pick one up for that price there's a link down below so I was thinking blimey first of all I wasn't expecting them to be that cheap. Second of all, how on earth are they that cheap as a brand new model? Well, of course, there is an answer to that. Now, although this does have a very modern paint job on it, as you can see, well, bang up to date, more or less, 2018 we're talking for RAF 100. And although I hope there's a very modern mechanism inside here, the main answer is that this model actually dates back many years to the Lima days. So this is made using an old Lima body. However, as we found before, a good livery, and this does look like it's going to be a good livery, can completely revitalise an old model, and I'm hoping that's going to be the case today. So with that, let's get this out, let's find out what it's like. I've not even had the box open yet, so this will be my first look at this. The Northern Rail RAF 100 Class 156 DMU, or Super Sprinter, I think they're called, if that's right. Let's get it out and find out. So yes, the RAF 100 livery. If you're not familiar with this and you'd like to know more about it, stay tuned, I'll tell you all about it in just a second. Although truthfully, even I don't know what specifically the Class 156 has to do with the RAF. I'm not sure about that. If you do know, let me know down in the comments. However, look at the packaging. This looks really, really cool. You've got a great image of the thing on the front. I love the back even more. As you can see, we've got uh, another couple of images of both units. And then what I would normally call a brief history, but of course I can't here because there's so much to read there, of the 156 and also this particular set as well, which is very cool. So always feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to have the full experience. But for now, I will turn this back over and show you the product number and such, which is actually on the bottom of the box. So if I can see this properly, the product number for this is R3772 Northern Rail Class 156 pack. And that's what you need to look up if you want to get one yourself. Although, as I say, there is a link down in the description. So with that, I've not had this out, as I've already said. So let's do that now and see this for the first time. Is it going to look modern or is it going to look old fashioned? Let's find out. Okay, well, it's covered with card. So I will leave it covered for the time being. We'll put it there. So class 156 operating and maintenance instructions this is going to be interesting because we'll see what the mechanism is like or will we ah right so it shows you how to couple the unit a little bit about lubrication a bit about body removal which of course is important if you're going to fit it with dcc and as you can see we have hornby's replacement for the ringfield unit really which has a five pole motor inside it and just two sets of driven wheels. Uh, that's what it looks like from that diagram, which is okay, I suppose, for the price. You wouldn't want something like that in a super modern and expensive DMU, but I think for the price that is just about reasonable. So we'll get onto that in just a second. For now though, let's reveal the actual DMU. <laughs> Hang on. Right, this packaging is a bit odd, isn't it? What happened to the block of ice packaging? I've already said this was pretty inexpensive. Yes, that's true. However, we're still talking 125 pounds here and here we have sort of sub Hornby Junior packaging here. So either I'm expecting this to have damage on it or it hasn't got a lot of detail at all and therefore it's okay in packaging like this. You know, it's, it goes a bit further though, doesn't it? Than just being practically suitable for protecting the model. It's all about user experience, isn't it really? I mean, does it feel like you're opening up a special, super detailed scale model from top quality modern packaging? Or does it feel like you're dragging an old Lima Loco out of some smelly cardboard? Mm, I'm not sure, but obviously this hobby is not about necessity. It's all about feelings, it's all about emotion, enjoyment. 
and perceived value for money as well. So yeah, something to think about. It does make a difference. However, that being the case, let's get some of these out then. I'll get the top unit out first, which has reasonable weight to it. So either they're both pretty weighty or I've pulled out the power car first. Let's have a look underneath. Yes, it does appear that this is the power car. So looking at it straight away, to my relatively untrained eye, it looks very, very detailed, doesn't it? And I'm sure that is due in no small part to the livery on this, which, as I say, is bang up to date. It looks really, really good, doesn't it? So things I've noticed is the couplings. I'm not familiar with this type of coupling or even whether they fit into NEM pockets or not. I am not sure. We'll find out more about that in just a second. Second of all, yes, this does have the uh, driving bogey on it, as you can see, which does use traction tyres, which I'm not a huge fan of. But um, whatever, if it works all right, then that's not too bad, is it? Yeah, apart from that, it looks very good. More on that in just a second. Let's feel the non-driven car then, um, which is actually not that noticeably lighter. It is a little bit, but it's not too bad. And looking underneath, yeah, there's definitely no motor assembly on this unit. It did cross my mind that they might maybe have put one in both, but no, I think for the price, that's pretty unreasonable to expect. And looking underneath, in fact, no, there are no pickups or anything on this which is again a bit of a concern because that means there can be no lights on board, which is probably something you'd want for a non-railroad DMU. Hmm, that's a bit troubling, isn't it? But once again, as with the power car, yeah, the level of detail looks, unless you're looking too close, pretty good, as I say, due to the paintwork mostly. So there we go, let's get these both into shop for you. The 156, for the money, I would say it's okay. It's not the amazing bargain I thought it was to start with, I don't think. However, I think there's still room for it to impress us. So with that, let's get this up close and personal and we'll take a close look. First though, here's a bit of history on the 156. So the British Rail Class 156, also known as the Super Sprinter of course, was first introduced in 1987 and it was intended to help replace the fleet of much older DMUs and diesel hulled passenger trains on the network. The resulting DMUs were much cheaper to operate than their earlier counterparts, and their original design, quite interestingly, was quite lavish for passengers. They were fitted with armrests and even tables. 144 sets were built in total over a three-year period, giving a total of 228 units in total. As part of the celebrations of RAF 100 in 2018, which of course is the 100th anniversary of the RAF, I believe, the Northern Rail 156480 was unveiled in this very impressive RAF 100 livery, which is due to carry for three years in total. As part of this event, as far as I could uncover, not 100% sure of this, but Hornby supposedly supplied a model of the 156 in this very guise as a one-off, and at the time they were not due to be for sale to the public, but either due to popular demand or due to a change of plan, I'm not sure, but here they are now available to buy. So there it is then, the Royal Air Force Class 156 up close and personal for you. And even though it looks very nice, don't get me wrong, I think the livery is superb on this. If I'm being brutally honest, I think it was almost misleading for Hornby to be selling this as a Hornby Railways main range locomotive and not as a railroad loco. Given how basic this is, I have to ask why Hornby have done that. Well, a couple of answers spring to mind. First of all, because locos in the railroad range tend to be quite basic without that much detail. And for that reason, more serious collectors or serious modelers might not be that interested in them, even though this model is definitely very, very basic without much detail on it, which is why I think it's misleading. But second of all, of course, in the railways range, where you would expect a lot of detail, the price, $124.99, sounds quite reasonable. However, if you were to put this into the railroad range for that price, as a beginner's model, it doesn't sound all that good anymore. So it's very, very naughty. So I've been trying to ask myself, is this really that bad? Is there a good justification maybe for this being in Hornby's top of the range stuff? Well, not really, as far as I can tell. So first of all, this model is at least 25 years old. And do you know why I know this is at least 25 years old? Because I found an article from 1994, which shows you how to improve the Lima Class 156. This is a model that needed improving 25 years ago. So goodness knows how old it really is. Because of that age, it lacks most modern features that we're all accustomed to from Hornby Railways models. For example, cab detail, working lights, detailed underframe, 
realistic interiors, even all-wheel drive. Every aspect of this model is very, very basic. And after all, every other Lima Loco that I can think of that is still out there, still being produced, is in the railroad range. This Loco is from, well, what Simon Kohler himself calls the dark age of model railways, I seem to remember from one of their videos, and yet they're still producing models like this these days, which I find very, very strange. So I have to come to the conclusion that it's very unreasonable for Hornby to keep this in the main range, given how old it is, and given how badly dated it is. If it was 40 years old or something and still really held up or they'd updated it in some way to make it fit into the modern Hornby range, I think that would be reasonable. But as it is, this is basically exactly the same as the old Lima model as far as I can tell. So let's take a look at some of the details then. Most noticeable is the underframe, which is sort of laughably unrealistic. Of course, detail like this would be fine in the railroad range, which is why Hornby put so many X Lima models into that range. But here in the main range, it just looks out of place. On the ends, as you can see, there's very little in the way of separately fitted detail. The windscreen wipers are just molded onto the windscreens, it looks like. And even though the lights look as though they might be working ones, unfortunately, there are no LEDs back there, so they're not going to work. All of the handrails are just painted on, as you can see. Absolutely nothing separately fitted going on there. The cabs are also left completely blank. In fact, when you look through the cab windows of this model, all you see is the motor bogey, which isn't very realistic indeed. Every single one of the windows is scratched, I kid you not, and whether that's just because the tooling is old or because the packaging was so bad, I don't know, but literally every window is scratched. I'm not kidding, look. It's preposterous, isn't it? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. There is at least some sort of interior detail inside there, which isn't too bad. So let's take a look at some elements of the livery then. We have this sort of RAF 100 banner there, which is very nice with all the RAF signage, as you can see. And that is consistent throughout the model, really. There's quite a lot of good quality printing going on here. As you can see, all the text is very well done. You've got the Northern Railway website there and some quite modern advertising, as you can see there, which I'm not that used to being a, a mainly steam enthusiast. You can see that they've even tried to increase the level of detail with some of the printed work, as you can see there, which is reasonably effective, I would say, not too bad. But besides that, I'm really struggling to sort of point much more than that out. If we look around the back, I suppose you can see we've got the warning signs there. We've got an exhaust, which might be separately fitted, I suppose. And then the corridor connector there, which again, I can't tell whether it's a part of the molding or not. But it's just a very, very basic model. And I was expecting more. I think the main problem is that I didn't know at the time of buying that this is a 25 plus year old model which meant that I was expecting lights. I was expecting a modern level of detail and that's really not what you've got. So I don't know why Hornby would think that that's a good idea because yes, of course it might drive sales initially, but when people get it out of the box, when they see the rubbishy cardboard that it came in and they take out this 25 year old piece of um, railway history, they're not exactly gonna be that chuffed as indeed I'm not. And that's not really what you want when your whole business revolves around people coming back and adding to their collections. So it's not a good idea. I don't know why they thought it was, but I think they ought to do better, frankly. It's a bit disappointing. At least it didn't cost the earth, but it's still quite expensive for what you can pick up secondhand for, what do you reckon, 50 quid tops? Do you remember my Backman Class 108? Well, that model has a fully painted cab, separately fitted windscreen wipers, a fully detailed, separately fitted underframe, full lighting on the front, cab lighting, passenger lighting, proper glazed windows that look really, really realistic. Guess how much that cost me? 75 quid. That is over 35 pounds less than I paid for this here. Just to put that into context for you there. Absolutely crazy. Well, let's see how it runs. Let's get it down onto the track. So there it is then, the preposterous, frankly, Hornby Class 156 down onto the track for you. To be as fair as possible from a distance like this and while it's turned off, as I say, it looks the part, doesn't it? Credit where credit's due. Now, what you might not be able to tell is that it's not actually coupled yet. I thought just for entertainment purposes, I would try to couple it unaided by the instructions uh, just to try and find out how easy it is. Obviously, I don't recommend you doing that if you're not sure how to do anything and you actually have instructions which tell you how. You'd be a madman to try and do it without the instructions, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give this a try. So I'm gonna try just shoving them together first, <laughs> which I might regret. No, that didn't work. Um, actually, I can't really see. Oh, maybe I'll, yeah, okay. <laughs> you obviously have to shove them quite hard. 
How to get them apart again, I'm not sure, but that's not too important right now because, uh, well, I don't need to take them apart at the moment. So let's set this to forwards then and see how this runs. So just so that I'm covering all bases, the mechanism is okay on this. Uh, only one car actually has pickups, which obviously means we haven't got lights. I think it's this car. So we've got one motor bogey here. We have two driven axles with traction tires, two traction tires, which I don't like, and they've got no business being on modern locos, but you know that and the rear bogey also picks up power, so at least it should be reasonably reliable, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see if it is or not. Apart from that, yeah, it's a very basic design of mechanism. I think it is just an entirely plastic chassis, um, which, you know, is not great for anything that costs over 100 quid. However, generally speaking, they do tend to run quite well, so if this is the same in that regard, then we might be okay. Let's give it some juice then and see how it goes. Turning it up very slowly. It's twitching, <laughs> and it's possibly giving the most jerky performance I've ever seen, but it has sped up on its own accord, so as I say, as always, this has not been running yet, so it will probably get better as it goes. And that isn't actually too bad, is it? As I say, those five-pole ring-field replacement motor units are quite decent. The reason I call them ring field replacements, of course, is that Hornby brought them out around the same time they phased out the ring field. Uh, they're not, in reality, a direct replacement. You can't just pull ring field motors out and put these in instead. I don't think, although I suppose that would be an interesting project. So it sounds very good. It runs quite smoothly, so at least the performance has redeemed it somewhat. Although, as I've already said, the lack of lights just makes it feel like a really old-fashioned loco. <laughs> However, yes, it is true that the mechanism now is a lot better than the 25-year-old mechanism that Lima used to use. Um, yes, I'm sure this is much better. It's a lot less serviceable, don't get me wrong, but performance-wise, straight out of the box, it does seem considerably better. So with that said, we'll get this running around the layout. I will set it to medium speed on the controller, see how fast that is, and uh, get it running. All right. Oh. There we go. So the performance is okay, it's very noisy, I must say, and the speed's slightly erratic, it, uh, yeah, it speeds up and slows down quite a lot, which is partly the controller's fault, but then again, not every loco of mine does it, so it can't be entirely attributed to the controller. Apart from that though, it was capable of doing a decent crawl. The traction tires, while I hate them and they fail over reasonably short periods of time, they do mean that the set has enough power to at least propel itself and probably enough power to haul an extra car or so if you wanted to couple something to one end or another. Apart from that though, yeah, there's not much to say about it. It does what it says on the tin in terms of performance reasonably well. All right, nearly there then, folks, and then I promise I will stop showing you this utter waste of plastic. But you'll enjoy this, I'm sure, because I've noticed since running in, it's actually devolved slightly, and what I mean by that is that it's no longer able to crawl. So out of the box, I'm sure it did a crawl, did it not? I haven't checked the footage yet, but it did. It wasn't very smooth, but it went very slowly. Well, now it can't seem to do that anymore. Let me set this to reverse, and I've got the controller in so that you can see that I'm not just messing this up on purpose. I'm going to turn it up very, very slowly and watch. Turning it up. It is on the express point now, so I will do this again just to... There we are. It kicks in at that speed. <laughs> Now, I'm sure it did better than that before, didn't it? Let's bring it back. Right, so it's not on the express point now. Turning up slowly. And it kicks in. And if I slow it down at all from there, it stops. <laughs> it took a while that time, but it did eventually stop. What is going on? It's getting worse, and I've only had it running for 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm not happy with this one, folks. Very disappointing, to be honest. Anyway, let's get it going again, just so that we get it out of shot, really. And I'll show you what else I'm going to be running alongside it. So on the inside line, we have the 108 that I've already mentioned, and every aspect of this model, perhaps barring the complexity of the livery, is considerably better than the new 156. This cost me £75, don't forget. And you can run it without ear protection on too, which is always a bonus. Then we have something, well, equally ridiculous, really, to the 156. It is the Hornby Pacer, my passenger cooking pacer. If only it was a super sprinter cooking pacer, we'd be okay. But uh, either way, enjoy the running session, if you can. 
and we'll see how it goes. So unfortunately folks, I cannot recommend this to you, unless you really are into the RAF and you'd like something to commemorate the 100th anniversary of it, um, I can honestly recommend almost anything else, especially if you're looking for a decent DMU with good value for money. You really would be better to just get the original Lima version from 25 or however many years ago, because believe it or not, with a good service they do run very well, it's practically exactly the same model, and even if you hold out for one in mint condition, you're going to be able to get one for about half the price of this. Otherwise, if you just want a basic DMU that's reasonably modern, check out the Hornby Railroad range. It's practically the same level of detail anyway, it's just got a more reasonable and accurate price. So, unfortunately, not too happy with this one. It has disappointed me. Let me know in the top corner. Has this disappointed you too? I'd be interested to know. Ultimately, though, the best way to show Hornby that we're not interested in recycled tat like this is to vote with our wallets and not buy it. So if you feel the same as I do, do it that way, and hopefully we won't end up with a situation like this ever again. So here are some of my ratings then for the Hornby Class 156. In my opinion, the level of detail on this, a Hornby Railways model, is basically preposterous. The only possible redeeming feature that comes to mind is of course the paintwork, the livery, which has to be said is very, very good. Now I personally happen to really, really like basic models without that much detail. However, there's a couple of expectations that go along with that. First of all, you expect to know that that's what you're buying. For example, when you buy a Hornby Railroad Loco for 60 quid or whatever it is, you can expect a low level of detail. However, when you buy a Hornby Railways Loco for over £100, you expect a little bit more. That's not what you're getting. Which brings us on to the second expectation, which is to pay very little for basic models. For £125, a 25 plus year old model is not very acceptable, so two stars there and that's generous, believe me. The performance then isn't that great either, it's very noisy and already it's lost its ability to do a crawl after just 30 minutes of running. Not very good, but I've given it a middle of the range 3 star because at least it does work and it does seem to have a reasonable amount of power, even if that is due to traction tyres which I don't like very much. Which brings us on to Mechanism, which I've just given two stars. It does work okay, as I've said. However, only one bogey is driven. It uses rubber tyres, which I don't like very much. And it uses a very basic plastic chassis with no proper bearings. So, once again, for a top-of-the-range Hornby Railways model, that's not really what you'd expect. The quality then isn't too bad because it's such a basic model with no darn separately fitted detail. There's nothing to drop off it or anything like that. However, I don't think good quality models should have traction tyres, and all of those scratches on the glazing on the windows has to knock it down a couple of stars, doesn't it? So, again, a bit of a disappointment there. The value then, now initially for a Hornby Railways Loco, or for what I thought was a Hornby Railways Loco, I thought that £124.99 or Hatton's price of £112.50 to be reasonably good. However, having now seen this model for what it is, a Hornby Railroad Loco, I have to say I no longer think it's great value. I think it's just okay now, so it's middle of the road, three stars. Overall then, I have given this a... <laughs> That's right, a cheap plastic trombone out of 10, which roughly translates to 5.17 out of 10. There we go, into the rankings then, 42nd Hornby's worst of this year, just above the Backman Prairie and just below the Hornby Railroad B17, which you haven't seen yet, but I promise you that is another turd for another day. I'm sure you're all going to really enjoy that one. It's almost hard to believe that this is from the same company that just last week released the Hornby Peckett B2. You wouldn't believe it, would you? Yeah, don't blame you, mate. I feel exactly the same way. Oh well, you win some, and you, you get badly ripped off by some, don't you? Never mind. Well, folks, I'm sorry that I couldn't give today's Loco the usual positive review. Unfortunately, there was just no hiding the fact that it was basically overpriced tat. And it is disappointing, because I wasn't expecting it to be. I really didn't know that it was going to be an old Lima model. And if I did, perhaps I wouldn't have bought the model, which I think basically reveals the main problem with this and why this shouldn't have been marketed as a Hornby Railways model. Either way, not to worry. Let me know down in the comments what you thought. It's not the end of the world. We'll get some better models next time, I promise. For now, though, thanks for your time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for wasting your time, too, like I did. At least we're all the same in that regard. And I will see you next time, folks. Take care of yourselves. Have a great week. And I will see you tomorrow.
with a special announcement. Oh, all right. See you, folks. Take care.